there are telltale signs that you need to pay attention to your car. If it doesn't look right, smell right, or feel right, or sound right, something is wrong. You need to get it sorted out. Today we're going to be talking about engine whines. Um, I have a, as you as you're aware, I've got a 2010 F-150, um, and it started experiencing an engine whine. I wasn't exactly sure what it was. There are a few things that can cause an engine whining noise, and this was a whining noise that matched the RPM. So as the RPMs went up, the, the engine whine got faster and higher pitched. As the RPMs went down, it got uh, lower pitched. So, uh, and it was immediate from when the engine first started. So after a little investigation, uh, I figured out that it was the alternator or more than likely the pulley on the alternator. Uh, another test that I did other than using the stethoscope to listen to the alternator, which, which really told me the story, but just kind of to verify that, I used a multimeter on the battery while the engine was running. Um, and the alternator should be charging the battery a little bit over 14 volts on most vehicles. Um, a key indicator for me was that it was charging, but it was only charging at about 13 volts. So that told me that possibly the, the either the alternator was going bad or the pulley was binding just a little bit and the alternator just wasn't performing as well. Um, so, after I swapped out the alternator, it was back up to uh, it was back up to charging at a little over 14 volts with the engine running. The Ford service department, Napa, O'Reilly, everyone told me that that pulley on this alternator was not serviceable. You had to replace the entire alternator. I'm not sure I completely agree with that because it looks like the pulley should come off. There's a nut that holds it on, but I couldn't find anyone to sell me a pulley, so I'm not sure what the deal was there. The alternator had 240,000 miles on it or close to it, 238. So it, it, it had served its life, uh, as did all of the pulleys uh, in the, the idler pulley and the tensioner pulley. Um, those had, they've all lasted as long as, as, as really can be expected. So while I was in there swapping out the alternator, I had to take the belt off anyway, the serpentine belt. So I thought I'd just go ahead and change those as well. Um, about a hundred dollars for the idler pulleys and the tensioner pulley and a couple hundred bucks for the alternator after the core charge. Um, very easy to do. If you have a noise similar to the one that I had, uh, check your alternator. It likely could be the source of your problem and your mechanic stethoscope is definitely going to come in handy in identifying that. I was under a real time crunch to get this repair made. So I did not have time to set up and do a video the way I would like to do. But what I will do is kind of walk back through what I had, what I went through to get the, to get the alternator and the pulleys off. Very easy to do. You'll take the air, the air intake uh, components out of the way. Um, use your half inch breaker bar. Put that on, put that on the tensioner uh, to to take the tension off that leverages up clockwise. Um, that'll take the tension off the belt. And the bracket on the top that holds the alternator, um, there, are, there are four bolts. Uh, one of them will require a deep socket to get to, and those are all 10 millimeter. And then on the bottom of the alternator, there are two 10 millimeter bolts that do not have to come all the way out. The alternator sits down on those. Um, so you just loosen those where you can pick the alternator up. There are the three idler pulleys. There are two smooth idler pulleys and one grooved idler pulley. They're all 13 millimeter. To remove the tensioner, it's a, it's, it's, there are three 10 millimeter bolts that hold the tensioner in place. Um, you'll have to take the tensioner off in order to get the tensioner pulley off. Uh, the bolt that holds the pulley on is on the back side. There's a wire on top that is also 10 millimeter that has to be taken off. Uh, and then there's, a, there's just a clip, a wiring clip uh, that, that has to come off. Though I found it easier to go ahead and remove the alternator and then unclip those wires after I got it out of the way. They were a little bit 
the, the, the clip was a little bit tricky to get to. Um, so you can do that too, just be real careful with it. Take the old alternator out, put the new one back in, and just reverse everything, hook it back up. It literally, um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six bolts and two connections to take the alternator out. But unless you just don't have the tools or you just are completely not comfortable with it, um, there, there's no reason to, to have someone do that. This is what the engine sounded like before. And then this is what it sounded like after. At the end of the day, I'm not 100% sure if it was just the bearing and the pulley on the alternator that was bad or if it was the alternator itself. I'm 99% sure it was the bearing and the pulley. Um, they, they just don't last that long. And like I said, this truck has nearly 240,000 miles and all of this was the original equipment. Um, so that says a little bit about Ford quality. I'm a Ford guy. If you're not, it's okay. Um, I am. So the alternator was 200 bucks after the core refund and then all of the pulleys together was about 110. So uh, m maybe you could have found, you know, Maybe you could have found the pulleys a little cheaper here or there. If I'd have had more time, I might have been able to hunt around, found a little little, a little cheaper alternator, some pulleys that were a little bit more economical. Uh, did not have, I just didn't have a lot of time at all. So if you have this same engine whine in your F-150, take a look at the alternator and start with a stethoscope. I can't tell you how, how, how handy this thing is to have. I think it should go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Be very careful because you have to have the engine running. So there are things moving. The belt and the fan are moving in there. When you go poking your stethoscope down in, don't, don't get it caught up because it'll get bad in a hurry. Hey, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Um, be sure and like the video and share it out to someone if you have this problem and it helped you or, or if you know someone who has an engine wine, has something going on. Share the video with them, maybe it'll help them out. Um, I always encourage people to do their own work as much as they can, or at least do your own diagnostics to figure out, to get a, a rough idea of where the problem might be. If you don't know how to fix it, or you just don't feel like fixing it, that's that's fine. But if you do end up going to a mechanic, uh, at least you will have a little bit of, uh, you'll have a little bit of ammunition that you'll have a pretty rough idea of what the problem is. Um, I know mechanics really hate it when people come in and say, I think this is my problem. And I understand that, um, but at least you will have enough knowledge to know if you take it to a mechanic shop and they start telling you it's, you know, your, your whining noise is coming from the rear end when you know full well it's coming from the engine, right? You'll have something to go on. Um, so that's it. Have a good day. Thanks for watching.